Hey everyone, welcome to Popular Cruising. I'm your host Jason Lepper, here with a deck by deck tour and review of Royal Caribbean International's Navigator of the Seas. I first sailed on the ship in 2003, shortly after it launched, and quite a lot has changed on board, as I'll be sure to point out, to modernize it for today's cruise travelers. Let's first begin with the ship's specifications. Navigator of the Seas is a standard, mainstream cruise ship and fourth in the line's Voyager class, as originally launched in 2002. She measures in at 139,999 tons, with a gas capacity of 3,968, resulting in a modest passenger space ratio of 35.28. Regarding its accommodations, we've had the chance to sail on the ship twice now in 2022 and tried out two cabin categories, including a spacious ocean view balcony one. Storage is decent, but the cabinetry is looking a bit dated. At least flat panel televisions have been updated, but we'd like to see some USB charging ports in addition to a couple of electrical outlets. Beds are somewhat stiffer, but comfy enough, and thus come teddy bear approved. But again, USB charging ports are lacking from the nightstands. Hooks at the bathroom, however, are helpful, despite the tired tile work inside. And although showers are smaller than on newer ships, the rounded enclosure did make it a little easier to turn around in. So we definitely appreciated the extra size afforded in our junior suite. With a tub shower combo, albeit a narrow one. The bedroom and living space is the largest upgrade overall. As is an expanded walk-in closet. Electrical outlets are similar, but Lavazza coffee makers are an added perk. And bonus seating enhances the singular sofa in smaller rooms. And a USB charging port built into the phone receiver is another nice amenity. Of course, the much expanded balcony is welcome also. If you haven't already done so, now is a good time to please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when all our new cruise videos are posted. And when you're ready to book your own Navigator of the Seas cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Vacations, who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get a complimentary quote, just click on the link right here, or call the number or email the address displayed below. Now let's check out the ship's activities, followed by its dining and entertainment, all deck by deck, starting low and working our way up. It might not be the most exciting venue on board, but the conference center is impressively sized on Navigator, making it closer in scale to ones on land versus those usually found at sea. Meanwhile, just outside is the ship's loyalty desk, And up a level from both is the art gallery on deck three. Just don't expect to see any pieces for auction that differ from nearly every other cruise ship, as Park West Gallery is again the capable but common vendor here. Opposite is the Focus Photo Gallery for purchasing images taken by professionals throughout the ship, as well as a dedicated studio space. For those who have sailed on the ship years ago, Casino Royale on Deck 4 now looks much different, having lost its vibrant Mardi Gras themed statues and signage at the entrance. But all the expected modern slot machines and table games remain for those looking to pass the time by gambling. The Voyager class was a trendsetter for being the first series of ships to introduce the Royal Promenade to Deck 5. Heading past the guest services and shore excursions desks is an interior mall that connects Navigator the Seas forward and aft atriums. The much wider ship features all kinds of promenade shops and other venues along the way, and is a bit more inward focused as a result. Venues without sea views thus include the newer to dry for, offering blowout hair services and products. To this day, the Royal Promenade really is an architectural marvel, considering its impressive placement on a floating vessel, complete with glass elevators no less. Also on Deck 5 is the Diamond Club, 
exclusively for the most loyal Royal Caribbean repeaters. While it's a nice venue to offer free drinks and snacks to loyalists, this particular one is rather cramped. Then up on deck 6 is Next Cruise, an inviting office for booking future cruises and taking advantage of any onboard incentives in the process. Up a level on 7 is still the traditional library and card room, for those looking to escape to a quieter retreat. And higher still on deck 11 is the main resort pool and splash pad, overlooked by a pair of additional whirlpools. Flanking the deck are also shaded cabana structures, besides the usual loungers. Otherwise, shade is harder to come by, as most of the deck and its non-dining seating is fully exposed to the sun, for those looking to bathe in its rays and take a dip in the pools themselves. A little more secluded and covered by comparison is the solarium, which is another set of whirlpools and a central pool reserved for adults only. It's a nice area, but boy, that pool is super cold and surprisingly unheated. For even more pampering, the Vitality at Sea Spa, although much smaller than it used to be, is where guests can purchase sublime body treatments. From the salon, to the relaxation room, and massage rooms for individuals or couples. My wife and I enjoyed a lovely hot stone variety here. And when it comes to getting in some exercise on board, the running track on deck 12 skirts the pool deck. And relocated to the back of the ship is now the Vitality at Sea Fitness Center. with a full array of equipment for guests to use, as well as a motion studio. On the opposite side, the partially displaced kids facility now extends into what used to be a sit-down Johnny Rockets location, including the Royal Babies and Tots nursery for the littlest ones, a video arcade for kids of all ages, with a fun variety of games, and Adventure Ocean, where the vintage diner once resided. Now for children to engage in arts and crafts and other group fun, including a fun beginner rock climbing wall. And off the back is the living room, for a dedicated teen space both inside and out. And naturally up on deck 13 and above is a full-fledged variety of rock climbing wall for older guests to eventually graduate to. A sports court remains at the center of it all. And a Royal Caribbean favorite flow rider beckons surfers to grab a board. But in lieu of the original miniature golf course is now a duo of dramatic water slides. One of which is a head-first mat type. For an intense descent. And the others of which is a raft kind that can accommodate just one or two together. For a fun series of downhill and uphill slopes across a very long length of splashy flumes before reaching the end. And golfers fear not because Navigator Dooms has been recreated at the very front of the ship with some very challenging trick shots and interesting trap doors. And nestled in Royal Caribbean signature Viking Crown Lounge on deck 14 is the Cosmopolitan Club, serving dual purposes as an observation lounge during the day and nightclub in the evening, now that the original club downstairs has been replaced by a new specialty restaurant. Rounding out activities is the Royal Escape Room, up another level on Deck 15. What was once the ship's wedding chapel is now a playful group setting for interstellar-themed puzzle solving. Unfortunately, it was closed during our sailings, though, so we can't say much beyond that. In either case, you're surely hungry now, and there's plenty of dining on Navigator, 
as we descend back to the bottom of the ship. Starting on deck 4 is a requisite Starbucks. For getting a specialty cup of joe. Or snack like the ones we all know Shoreside. Another traditional Royal Caribbean staple to remain is the Schooner Bar. Its nautical setting is still one of our favorites for participating in several of the ship's daily trivia sessions. Meanwhile, across the way, in what used to be the top level of the ship's dungeon-themed nightclub, is now hooked seafood. And if you're wondering, the first floor of the original nightclub was filled in with additional cabins. Currently, Dungeness Crab is as close as you're going to get to the former space. With delicious meals, consisting of cheesy biscuits, and lots more delicious seafood like a hearty chowder. For classic fish and chips for lunch. All finished off with a tangy cherry pie. Then on deck 5, as well as below on 4 and 3, is the simply titled Dining Room, as the ship's triple-decker main restaurant. It sure is a dramatic space that is indeed timeless to this day. We didn't eat a whole lot of meals in here with so many great specialty options, but dinners are decent, as are tasty breakfasts. Especially as a nice send-off on the final morning of a cruise. But there are still so many more watering holes and restaurants to explore, such as the R-Bar. A newly trendy space opposite guest relations. For a drink before or after dinner. Or any other time, really. But our favorite along the Royal Promenade is the Bamboo Room. Which replaces what used to be vintages on the ship. The Tiki Bar is now a more colorful space. With alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages to match. Among playful animated art on the walls. as well as extra cost but worthwhile appetizers like this to enjoy. Also across the way is the Copper and Clover Pub. For various beers on tap. In addition to a social gathering space for listening to live music, Cafe Promenade is the place to get some free bites on this level. Including finger sandwiches. And Royal Caribbean's less than stellar pizza. Better, of course, is the Ben & Jerry's ice cream you can alternatively purchase from the freezer next door. I mean, you can never go wrong with Cherry Garcia. Or even a Coca-Cola Freestyle fountain drink while you're at it. And for even more snacks or a full meal, Playmakers is a sports bar. Complete with arcade games. Pool and more.
before diving into delicious pile on nachos. Unique buffalo chicken crunch rolls. And the surefire hit that is a gooey campfire cookie served in a skillet. And back up top around the pool on deck 11. There are no doubt bars servicing not only the solarium, but also the main pool area. With a double decker lime and coconut bar. To the side of which is also a complimentary soft serve ice cream station. For getting a cone to enjoy downstairs or even take upstairs. While the sit down version of Johnny Rockets was removed, Johnny Rockets Express has been reintroduced poolside for gourmet burgers, shakes, and more for a surcharge. The likes of Rocket Doubles are still super tasty, but the original ambiance is certainly missed. And sadly, a local fresh for an included Mexican alternative on the other side is surprisingly bland. Even a side salsa bar is not enough to jazz up the flavorless tacos, quesadillas, and burritos here. What was far more impressive by comparison is the windjammer just inside. For being a high volume buffet servicing lots of people, the food is actually very good. Including great ethnic options such as Indian cuisine, carvery selections, and more. Chop's Grill will be familiar to longtime fans of Royal Caribbean as the line's signature steakhouse. And a handsome venue with great sea views. Or another option is the great Jamie's Italian, with similar vistas. and a more colorful setting complete with open kitchen. The bread service here is mouth-watering. Even before getting to an epic meat plank. Arancini with black truffle no less. Super savory pastas. And refreshing desserts. But our favorite specialty restaurant on board is Azumi on deck 14. Nestled in the side of the Viking Crown Lounge is the ship's awesome sushi and Japanese cuisine. starting with edamame. And working towards traditional miso soup. Perfectly crunchy shrimp firecracker spring rolls. And other outstanding sushi rolls like truffled cream lobster tempura. And baked snow crab and salmon dynamite varieties. before finishing with a rich chocolate lava cake. Last but not least, the entertainment on board Navigator is a bit of a mixed bag. The outdoor screen for one is in seriously sorry shape, with all movies displayed with an unfortunate green tinge. This hardware definitely needs a replacement. Much better inside is the Star Lounge. Here is another instance where the ship has been drastically de-themed. 
Gone is the former Ixtapa lounge and its overt Mayan aesthetic. However, many elements, although painted over, still remain for those looking closely. Off such pillars, excellent live musicians, particularly the house big band, perform wonderful jazz sets that should not be missed. Live music really is a highlight on this ship. Like also at Boleros, a Cuban themed space with great drinks, plus Latin music in the evening. The Royal Theatre is the main show lounge. Impressively encompassing three decks worth of the ship. For hosting hilarious comedians, as well as ventriloquists, each of which entertained us more than the sole stage production of Showgirl. The singing and dancing were good enough, but Royal Caribbean has upped the ante so much on its newer ships with full-scale remounted Broadway shows that a singular musical review on Navigator just doesn't cut the mustard anymore. But if you're a cruiser that has not been on the newer ships yet, you may still find such old-school offerings to be enticing. Much more impressive by comparison is the still unique Studio B ice skating rink, where besides offering guests the chance to skate during the day, present spectacular ice shows at night, enhanced by magnificent drone light displays. Skaters and drones even interact for a graceful moment, juxtaposing man and machine, before the full crew takes to the ice to dazzle spectators even further. Personally, I'd much rather see a show here than the Showgirl stage show in the main theater. Just bravo to the talented skaters and all their marvelous kinetic moves. Now for our final Navigator of the Sea's pros and cons. What we didn't like, as a pain in the aft, so to speak, are the remaining dated staterooms and suites with limited charging outlets, the poor quality of the El Loco fresh Mexican food, particularly for a ship departing from California, and lackluster main production shows, not to mention the broken poolside screen. But what we loved and can take a bow include the always standout ice skating performances, the excellent Azumi Sushi restaurant, and impressive array of thrilling water slides. Thanks so much for watching. If you would, as it really does help support us, please like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos. Watch our other ones and visit popularcruising.com.